Welcome one and all to The Late Show. Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Every day, I wake up and I think things can't possibly get any worse. <laughs> and every day, Donald Trump says, hold my filet of fish <laughs> I'm going in. Oh. Uh, let's see. Today's Tuesday? Yesterday. Monday. The Trump administration finalized plans to weaken the Endangered Species Act. <laughs> For a reaction, let's go to the American Bald Eagle. <laughs> you get him. You get him. There is one small piece of good news in this story. The rules are not retroactive to past endangered species. So, if you're already extinct, nothing to worry about. <laughs> you're good to go. Administration has also announced on Monday that starting in October, poor immigrants will be denied permanent legal status if they are deemed likely to use government benefit programs. Really? <laughs> Because I know of at least one immigrant lady who lives in really nice public housing and pretty much only works on Christmas. <laughs> the, uh... Hey. Easter. I guess Easter, too. Easter. The plan was unveiled by Head of Immigration Services and Just for Men Box... <laughs> Ken Cuccinelli. Uh, the Cooch uh, defended his policy targeting Latinos when asked if it would target Latinos. Why shouldn't the Latino community feel targeted by this? The same question might have been asked when my Italian immigrants were coming, uh, immigrant uh, ancestors were coming. If we had been having this conversation 100 years ago, it would have applied to more Italians. Luckily, we're not having this conversation 100 years ago, or else I wouldn't be up here today to pull up the ladder between he and my family. Suck it, Hispanics. You've been cooched! <laughs> then... Right on time. Right on time. Then a reporter asked Cuccinelli if this new rule goes against the poem on the Statue of Liberty, and he said this. I'm certainly uh, not prepared to take anything down off the Statue of Liberty. Um, we, we, uh, we have a, a long history of being one of the most welcoming nations in the world. I do not think, by any means, we're ready to take anything off the Statue of Liberty. We don't want to take anything away from that poem. We just had a, uh, you know, ultimately just want to add one word. Psych. Wow. Trump. Wow. Trump. <laughs> Trump weighed in on these changes on his way to Pennsylvania, and I'll tell you all about it in tonight's extra loud episode of... Chopper Talk. Trump wasn't at. People love Chopper Talk. America loves week. Chopper Talk. It's the week. Trump wasn't at the White House today. He was at his golf resort in Bedminster, New Jersey. And so, instead of the spacious White House lawn, he held the press conference about six inches from the whirling blades, and he had this to yell about his new immigration policy. I don't think it's fair to have the American taxpayer. You know, it's about America first. I don't think it's fair to have the American taxpayer paying for people to come into the United States. American taxpayers should only cover the important stuff, like my helicopter rides to and from the Gulf. <laughs> now, Trump wasn't asked. Trump was asked about Jeffrey Epstein, and he defended a conspiracy theory about the Clintons killing Epstein that the president himself retweeted, which was originally posted by comedian Terrence K. Williams. He's a very highly respected conservative pundit. He's a big Trump fan. Uh, that was a retweet. That wasn't for me. That was from him. But he's a man who has uh, half a million followers, a lot of followers, and he's respected. First of all, it was from you. A retweet <laughs> is from you. That's how it works. What? I didn't stab you. That was somebody else's knife. I re-stabbed you. <laughs> and by the way, the guy whose knife I used, a very respected stabber. <laughs> Second of all, Trump doubled down on the... It could have been Bill. You really think that Clinton are involved in Jeffrey Epstein's death? I have no 
idea. The question you have to ask is, did Bill Clinton go to the island? Because Epstein had an island. That was not a good place, as I understand, because I was never there. You have to ask, did Bill Clinton go to the island? That's the question. If you find that out, you're going to know a lot. Did Bill Clinton go to the island? Did Hillary hide her emails on that island? Could... <laughs> Could that be the island where Barack Obama was really born? I'm not saying... Wow. I'm not saying that all three of them killed Jeffrey Epstein. I'm just saying, did all three of them kill Jeffrey Epstein? Sorry, I can't... Was, I can't hear that. Trump was... Now, Trump was uh, there to chop her out to western Pennsylvania, where he visited a brand-new cracker plant named for the chemical reaction of cracking gas molecules into the building blocks of plastic. Although I'm not sure Trump knows that's what it means. <laughs> Crackers, huh? Are we talking about the kind you put in the soup or the kind that shows up to my rallies? Which one? <laughs> Just give me an idea of which. Whoa! 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 The plant uses a controversial practice that alarms environmentalists called fracking for plastic. Okay. Okay, now he's just trolling us. He's just <laughs> jamming together the two worst words a liberal can think of. Yeah, after fracking for plastic, I'm gonna go gun littering, then... <laughs> and then I think we'll be drilling for racism. Trump's speech was really fracking long, and he made sure to hit a very important campaign message, truck, go, vroom, vroom. I love trucks of all types. Even when I was a little boy at four years old, my mother would say, you love trucks. I do. I always love trucks. I still do. Nothing changes. Yes, nothing changes. <laughs> nothing changes at all. Emotionally, I'm still four. I love trucks. <laughs> you got fire. You got... You got dump. You got Tonka. Trump talked about the declining steel industry, and he did not mince words. Pennsylvania Steel raised the skyscrapers that built our cities. And by the way, steel, steel was dead. Your business was dead, okay? I don't want to be overly crude. Your business was dead. <laughs> I, would, I would love to see Dr. Trump's bedside manner. Okay, which one of you is Sarah? Okay, Sarah, your husband is dead. He was murdered. <laughs> he was murdered with a knife like this. Stab, stab, and he stab. And I don't want to put two point of a fine on a fine of a point on it, but uh, there's no afterlife. It's just darkness. <laughs> he also warned about what would happen if the coal and the fracking industries were to disappear. Your fracking is gone. Your coal is gone. You guys, I don't know what the hell you're going to do. You don't want to make. Widgets, right? You don't want to make... Do you want to learn how to make a computer, a little tiny piece of stuff? You put it with those big, beautiful hands of yours, look. <laughs> gonna take these big hands, he's gonna take this little tiny part. You don't want, you don't want to make computers with those big, lustrous arms of yours. You want to... <laughs> you don't want to make computers. You want to make the technology of the future. Solid steel, coal-powered blimps. <laughs> beautiful hands. These hands. These hands. Oh. Though Trump said he loved natural gas, he went all Don Quixote on the windmills. Big windmills that destroy everybody's property values, kill all the birds, and then all of a sudden it stops. The wind and the televisions go off. And your wives and husbands say, Darling, I want to watch Donald Trump on television tonight. But the wind stopped blowing, and I can't watch. There's no electricity in the house, darling. Oh, oh, yes. Wow. Oh, yes, darling husband. The wind isn't blowing, so you can't watch Trump on TV. It isn't at all that I pulled the circuit breaker so I wouldn't have to hear the syphilitic ramblings of the madman. Damn you, windmills! Damn you, windmills! Damn you! Trump was very impressed with the turnout at the event. That's a lot of people back there for a, 
for like 11 o'clock speech. It is a big crowd for an 11 o'clock speech, especially considering it was 2.40 p.m. <laughs> Myself. Damn thing. What? Hey, hey, it's not my fault. I think this watch is windmill powered. <laughs> Mickey gave me the wrong hands in here, I'm not sure. <laughs> Trump also bragged about the economy. Our country now has the hottest economy anywhere in the world. Every time a prime minister, president, king, queen, dictator, whatever they may be, some are sort of mutual, some you have presidents and prime ministers who are actually dictators. Yes, some of us do. <laughs> or wanna be. Wanna be. Wanna be. Shockingly, uh, Trump had something nice to say about the president of Mexico. The president now has been great. And he's got 27,000 soldiers on our southern border and on his border with Guatemala keeping our borders safe. I want to thank Mexico. It's incredible. We have close to 27,000. You think of that. We never had three. I think we had about two and a half soldiers. We had two and a half soldiers. <laughs> Why we never took that half soldier to the hospital, I'll never know. <laughs> thank you. Big one. That was a big one. That was a big one. If all the chaos here in America is making you want to flee the country, what you think again? Because the rest of the world is even crazier. Hong Kong is in turmoil. For the second day in a row, pro-democracy protesters have taken over the airport, causing all flights to be canceled. And I would like to note that that mass uprising in Hong Kong looks exactly like the waiting lounge before any Southwest flight. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. <laughs> David Pinkett Smith is here. But when we return, 